You know, it's kind of funny. I've never really played a Halo game. I mean, I played the original Halo on the original Xbox a little bit, played a tad bit of Halo 2, but never got massively involved in the stories. I played so little of those games that I'm better off saying I've never really experienced it, especially not any of the multiplayer experiences. And that's not because I don't like the game or the gameplay or anything like that. It was just simply I grew up in a house filled with PlayStation consoles. And it's not that anyone in my house were Sony fanboys or anything like that. It was just simply luck of the draw. Whatever my parents got their hands on, we ended up putting it in the house and we just simply stuck to PlayStation because it served the basic needs of playing video games. So needless to say, when everyone was hyped and excited for Halo Infinite, I was one of those people that just frankly couldn't give a fuck. Not one of those bandwagoners that just jump on a game because it's free to play or it's brand new and I pretend I played all these games and know everything. I don't, I don't know jack shit about the story. I don't know anything about the universe. I don't understand the meta and how a lot of the multiplayer games were played then and even now. I have a lot of friends and family that do and they were obviously very excited for this game to come out. They were talking about all the time they're going to invest in this game. I was more thinking I was going to invest all my time into Battlefield. Well, Halo Infinite's multiplayer beta has been out for a little over two and a half weeks now, just shy of three weeks as of this recording, and uh, I don't know how it happened, but I already have over 70 hours invested in this game. I officially have more time and effort invested in this game than my parents have in my entire childhood. Jokes aside, I said all that because while I wasn't very knowledgeable in previous experiences or a huge Halo fan jumping into Infinite, I am thoroughly enjoying this experience and everything it has to offer. And I wanted to talk about some things that I think this game can really benefit from in the future. One other thing I do want to make clear though is I don't want this game to be something that it's not. You know, the other day I was playing Battlefield 2042 and I heard someone say that they wish that game was more like COD. That EA would incorporate skill-based matchmaking and they would do more things similar to Activision to have a more refined experience. I don't like that. I don't think every shooter needs to be the same and feel, sound, design, progressions need to be the same. Metal that's what it was. Medals also need to be the same. There needs to be a prestige in Battlefield. That's done. Go play COD then. I don't think every game needs to be the exact same. Because then everyone's just going to get burnt out and there's going to be nothing different and no real competition. I love the game for simply what it is. It's a very basic concept with basic objective based game modes with a high skill gap. And I love it for that. But that being said, let's get into some of this stuff. You know, if I say anything stupid to longtime Halo fans or you think of better alternatives or anything like that, let's talk. Let me know. If anything, this is a conversation piece and not me so much complaining or me thinking I know what's best. Well, the first thing I wanted to tackle was something everyone's been very vocal about, progression, tied to the battle pass. Now 343 has made some improvements to it, I've gotten a lot better challenges. Personally though, I still think it should be tied to your XP and how well you do in matches and not so much tied to these challenges that you're actively trying to complete, but I also think these challenges need to be <laughs> reworked because you have challenges thrown in that completely mess up the ebb and flow of matches and gameplays. In some instances, it makes the experience more of a chore. You know, some people have the challenges where they got to play ranked matches in. If they're not of that skill level where they never played ranked or they don't know exactly what's going on, then your entire team gets punished because they're there just to play ranked. Or I've had this happen in big team battles where people need sniper rifle kills and you have four or five people huddling over the sniper rifle and fighting over that. Or they'll do it in ranked and they'll just hit whoever picks up the sniper and they pray and hope that they get a sniper kill next. You know, it's fine to have challenges and do your thing, but when personal progression becomes more important over playing the actual game, then it becomes a problem. Another example was I was playing Oddball and we had two teammates straight up tell me and a friend that they're not going to play the objective because their challenges get assault rifle kills. You know, that's cool and all, but in situations like that, you open yourself up to getting shit talked, which is basically what happened. The dude was talking about how he needed assault rifle kills and we were telling him how he was negative so he should just play the objective, which made more sense anyways because that's where all the damn enemies are. And then I know there's another challenge going around where you got to kill an enemy who's on a killing spree. How in the world are you even able to control something like that? Stuff that's luck based and, and you feel compelled to really boost to get it. I know some people are boosting to get that challenge completed which I'd really show you how much of a problem you have. Again, the progression in the battle pass is slow. It does suck. It's got its own problems but I think the main problem here is when you get those challenges that put people in positions where they're more focused on leveling up their battle pass rather than playing the actual game. Because now you're just creating situations where people become incredibly frustrated because half their team is more preoccupied with progressing their battle pass and actually playing the game. Now beyond the progression, another major annoyance I've been running into is audio in this game. It seems to be very inconsistent. There's moments where I can hear enemies and teammates loud as day. There's other times where I can't really hear enemies but I can hear my teammate sounding like he's being choked. 
don't know what kind of badass space marine that is. And then there's other times where I can't really tell when I'm getting shot at, audio-wise. I mean, visually. Visually, too, it's a little off. I had to change my color scheme to make it a little bit better, but it's still a little bit of a problem. Audio seems to really cut in and out, and it seems to also be a little bit of an issue when you're aiming down your sight. But I've had a lot of times where I was getting shot, and there's no real indication that I'm getting shot because I turn off my controller vibration because vibration messes up my aim. And there's no audio, and the HUD is kind of crappy, so I don't really know that I'm getting hit until it's too late, unless I'm paying attention to my health bar. Another thing that's pretty inconsistent are the melees. First off, I really hate how everyone's first instinct in this game is to punch you. Personally, I think there should be a second and a half delay between each smack, so that way someone can't hit you back to back. But the lunges, I don't understand. You know, some people get like a five foot lunge to hit you in the mouth. Sometimes you get it, other times you don't. I don't get the melees. I'm cool with the insta-kill back smack. I understand that's always been a thing. I personally like it. It's satisfying if it's something you can successfully pull off, but the kind Constant punches, especially in ranked if someone can't hit their shot, so their instinct is to literally just walk up to you and hit you in the mouth. That's annoying. The grenade spam is also a pain in the ass. I know some people have been calling a little bit of a nerf for the grenades. I'm split on it. I'm not a fan of everyone's first instinct being to spam grenades and to punch. The melee lunge I think is a little inconsistent, and I think there needs to be a small delay in between each punch. It's cool to hit, but when you got full on boxing matches and everyone's winning because that's their first instinct, it's annoying. I don't know, what do you guys think about the melee? is you think they're fine you think the lunges are cool what are your thoughts but I mentioned ranked a minute ago I actually spend the majority of my time playing ranked I think it's great I think as far as ranked goes there needs to be two fixes one of them is major and that one being if you load into a game and you don't have a full four-man team it doesn't matter if you're playing solo and duo or if you're playing with a full open lobby if you don't load in with four men or four teammates the game should automatically end and with this game ending I don't think anyone should be punished because it's damn near impossible to win any type of ranked match when you don't have a full four-man team. If someone leaves prematurely, if they get disconnected, if they quit, whatever the case may be, I think the match should end and you automatically be put back to the lobby. Because otherwise, if you're on the team that doesn't have a full four-man and the three of you aren't communicating and the three of you aren't on top of your game, then you're pretty much guaranteed to lose and your rank is ultimately going to take a hit because you were basically screwed from the outset. And I don't think that's fair. I also think as far as your ranking goes, there shouldn't be such a heavy emphasis on KD. You know, I've had games where I played the objective and did okay as far as KD goes or did really badly. My rank barely went up. And then there's other games where we barely won and I annihilated the other team as far as my KD went and I leveled up a level and a half. Or you get teammates that are so preoccupied with getting a high KD ratio that they're more preoccupied with killing than actually playing the objective. So in the end, it doesn't matter anyways because you're gonna lose. I think with these two fixes, ranked would be much better of an experience as I mentioned with the challenges that make people become more preoccupied with personal progression than actually playing the game your KD ratio is that challenge it's a little distracting people are more preoccupied with that over than actually winning the match and I don't know if you guys have been hearing but there's already cheaters inside of Halo Infinite which isn't that much of a surprise it is free to play and obviously Call of Duty Warzone is being plagued by that type of stuff and Infinite is not safe and I've noticed that on PC there's no way to block or report players I think some type of system should be put in place hopefully once the game fully comes out of the beta come December 8th in the next couple weeks we get something like this because when you run into cheaters there's no way to really get away from them unless you wait a couple minutes to get another match going or at least I haven't been able to find any way to block or report players if you guys have please let me know how I can do that but ultimately that was the major things that I wanted to talk about in Halo Infinite's multiplayer there are some other things I do think needs a little bit of work some of the spawns do kind of suck I mean right here I had an enemy spawn directly in my line of sight I've been spawned into enemies lines of sights I've been spawned with enemies enemies have been spawned with me it's not as bad as other games but it <laughs> especially in ranked it does become a little bit of annoying to spawn with with enemies where you're instantly getting shot at so some spawns on some maps may need a little bit of tweaking and personally I would love to see the chat profanity filter and talking to enemy teams be a little bit more lenient as of now you can chat in game but you can't talk to the enemy team so much for being competitive right also the profanity filter I think is a little too harsh I get it like if you want to type something up like grab the fucking ball obviously fucking is gonna be blurted out but for some reason if I was to type that balls also blocked out so now it just looks like I'm on a 
cursing rant. I think having a slider where you're allowed to enable or disable profanity would be a nice step in the right direction. Obviously, we're just gonna have to wait and see, but that's some thoughts and opinions on the 70 hours I've invested in Halo Infinite, specifically, obviously, the multiplayer. Let me know what you guys think. Have you guys been playing the multiplayer? What are you guys' thoughts and opinions on it? Are you guys longtime fans or are you barely hopping into it? Better yet, are you playing on PC or Xbox and you play with mouse and keyboard or controller? This game is really weird. Every other shooter, mouse and keyboard reign supreme, but for whatever reason, I'm leagues better on a controller in this game and I don't understand why.